Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another episode of uh, Fundamentals of Research in Medicine with Professor Fikri Abuzidan. Uh, this is our 12th episode and actually uh, so far we discussed about the designing studies and uh, preparing our you know, environment, collecting data, analyzing data, the many things. So I assume that you finish your research. Now it's time to present your research in multiple scientific environments. It can be in some grand rounds, it can be in conferences. So this episode is actually uh, covering how you present your research in this you know, scientific uh, environment to your colleagues, your peers. Prof, uh, can we learn about after the completing your study, how our students, how the researchers can present this, you know, study results to their you know, colleagues. Yeah, Arif, uh, I mean, again, we go to the principles, and I'm sure they are also very uh, technology-oriented uh, young uh, uh, students, but I have to stress basically. And before we, we really start even how to present, uh, it's very important to stress that technology is just one, it's a tool, it's not an aim. So I notice many people try to overuse technology and sometimes it fires back. So the first thing, please, think about your presentation than to show yourself. Sometimes it doesn't really uh, work so much if you do that. Now. Presentation is a communication, so the communication skills should apply, and we know that communication are two types, a communication which is oral, and, uh, and the communi communication which is written. Now, interestingly, now we have this communication through videos, which is actually documented, and this is really recent, because how much can you keep this is very important. And this is very important because also for archiving, uh, the written communication are kept for a long time. So if we are going to write something, uh, it stays in the literature for years. Sometimes we go back to papers 150 years, 100 years. So I personally like the written documentation. A presentation is, is you cannot consider it actually as a full uh, full documentation because you can present a poster, you can present a talk, and I want the students to think of it as one step towards the final written documentation of what you really think is important because the learning process and search process sometimes take a long time before you document I think this is the right way. So and we go now to the basics principles and the the, the presentation, you, you should take it serious. Serious, what does that mean? If you want to make a presentation, you should ask yourself, or even arrange a presentation, the same principles, who will present? Let's say you have five doing a study, who will present that study? Uh, when I'm going to present it? What I'm going to present? And where I'm going to present? These are very basic, and you can see, interestingly, sometimes people advertise a symposium and there's, they don't know the time, they don't know the place. And assume that you know, okay, let's say you can start presenting in, a, in the room, classroom, up to going to the top international conference, being like the invited speaker of a plenary lecture or a, a state of art lecture. The principles are the same, so you should take it serious and you gradually go, go up step by step. And this short uh, presentation will not be able to cover everything, but I will go quickly through it. So first of all, let's say you decide what are you going to present, and then you say, I want to present it, and you submit it for a conference. And then it comes to you either oral presentation or poster. Each of them has a specific way of, of preparing, a specific way of presentation that you have to be aware of. First of all, you should check the time. If they tell you 10 minutes, it's different from one minute. At one time, I have to present one year of research in one minute as a competitor. So, 
you ask yourself sometimes five minutes, seven minutes, and then they tell you two minutes for discussion. So you have to check exactly to finish on that time maximum and give the time for discussion. Otherwise, you lose it. The basic principle they say, let's say you are going to give a seven minute talk as oral presentation, and then the average they say it's one slide per minute. Sometimes you can use two slides per minute. It doesn't matter if you use, let's say, an image. Yeah. But the principles are simple. They don't use more than seven lines. Uh, don't use long words because the slide, you are not reading from the slide. And I find some people talking to the slide, not to the people, because they are reading the slide. Now, if you read from the slide, why don't you present, why don't you talk? The people can read on their space and they will understand better. Yeah. So, you try, you don't need to write a very long sentence. You just write what will remind you. Maybe in the conclusions you can write it in more detail. But the slides are just meant to remind you of what are you going to say. So, and then you don't look to the slides. You just glance the slides and you talk to the people in their faces. One of the tricks I learned actually from Bo Eklo, a very nice trick, is that for a presentation you try to talk to the last person in the room. So if it's a small room, and then everyone listen, listens to you. The other thing which is important, we call it in the slide, is the white space. I find some people writing small three lines at the top of the slide and leaving the slide, all of it is empty. So why not to make the slide, the, 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 the font big? So everyone can see it. And I can tell you if you use small font, maybe half of the people at the back, they don't see what you are seeing and you are lost. Because why are you presenting it? It's pre you are presenting it to really to the people about a message. So you lost half of the people simply because you did not use the font. Now the color is a tricky thing, by the way. And I can really, I know that you, you are really a good art artistic, Arif, and you like the white and black, which is very good. The principle there, it should be, there should be good contrast. Now, if you use black and white with, con with the good contrast, it's a strong cost contrast. So for long lectures, let's say if you are giving a lecture 30 minutes or more, people will start really shining in their eyes. So people advise to have like blue or white, uh, I mean, a yellow, uh, yellow or white uh, letters over blue background. Not because the contrast is not very good, but because uh, it re 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 uh, relaxes the eyes. For example, a red background is really very irritating. If you have a long lecture and you make a black background, people tend to sleep. So think about these small things. Uh, believe me, some of the lectures, if you are really very important, you may need one month preparing this lecture and how will you present it. Now, this is about the visual thing. But I want to stress that visual aid will never replace a bad study. <laughs> so whatever your study and your, your, your basis for your presentation should be very basic, very strong, and then the visual aid will help you. Using other visual aid, by not trying to put a, a, a square within a square within a square, is actually distracting. Or putting a background which is irrelevant. Some people put uh, images behind the slides. The slides should be simple, should be short, shouldn't be too much, should f occupy the host. Now, the other thing is that who is the other part of the presentation? It's the presenter. So as a presenter, I can give you three basic principles that really, you can see me now when I'm talking. I'm not using the tone of talking. People will sleep. Believe me, they like uh, the mom who is speaking to her the young baby. She will let him sleep. Try to raise your voice up and down. And see, I'm moving my hand, so I'm using my body intentionally, although I should be standstill. Uh, because the body language, you can really get be, being affected by the body language to the, to the people around you. The third thing is to fill your space. Sometimes I like in a lecture, if it's really big, I don't attach, it's better not to attach yourself to this specific place unless they ask you. You can really move around, fill the space, be interactive with the people in the way that look to their eyes, don't look actually and that makes a lot of a lot of difference out of trying to 
to because why are we presenting? By the way, we cannot carry the knowledge in what time we present. All what we can do is really to raise the interest of the people. Uh, Prof, uh, this is for oral presentations. Uh, yes. And it's like, you know, the tricks and hints you, you prepare, I mean, you, you provide it now. Uh, as you said, it's a very short presentation. Sometimes five, sometimes seven, sometimes ten minutes. But honestly, I don't remember ten minutes presentations recently. I mean, very short presentations. Yeah, sometimes. usually, usually, uh, you know, by the way, the thinking process of a person cannot concentrate more than 20 minutes. And, uh, uh, yes, you're right, Prof. Uh, so, in that short period of time, uh, what do you think, you know, the presenters focus on more to convey the message to the, the audience? Yeah, since we are speaking about science, uh, the, the, you should be, the way I already have a specific uh, 10 minutes, 7 minutes presentation, I have maybe one slide introduction, and I like to show a dramatic case. Let's say I'm doing one on, on work-related injuries. I will present one of my personal patients with a really very dramatic, like for burns, I will get a guy with black hands, which are... So you... The you rest are, there actually attention. Uh, give yeah. the attention. The first yeah. slide should really raise the attention. Oh, this is serious. And you show them something dramatic, and you show them, tell them your own story, then they yeah. will pick up. And then directly I put my aim is to do and do. I really don't do a lot of, because it's not short slide, thing, but yeah. maybe one slide, maybe yeah. one important slide, but yeah. don't go into introduction, three, four slides, you lose a lot. Yeah. The methods don't detail it, by the way, because yeah. the it methods, takes time, you cannot actually, the idea of methods, in, as we'll see in papers, it should be reproducible. You cannot do that in a presentation. So you can simply say, I've done a retrospective study, this is what I did, these are my, uh, patients, Very a, yeah. one slide possibly, maximum two slides. Yeah. Now the core of the presentation should be on the results. Yeah. Maybe three or four slides. Yeah. Now one of the mistakes people do, they do not differentiate between written papers and presentations. For example, pies are not useful for uh, written papers because what you can put in a pie, you can write in half a letter, half yeah. a line. Yeah. So. Detailed tables, you cannot use them for presentation. You have actually the published table to simplify it in a way that you can carry the message in one, one, uh, one uh, minute. Yeah. Now, there is something called the, 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 the appearance. Uh, you appear things one by one. This is what we used to put, by the way, in the old days, once we had the projectors. You cover the slide and you move the slide. Now you can do it nicely with PowerPoint. Yeah. So you can use the appear, appear so people can concentrate. Alternatively, if you have a big uh, table, you may highlight in a, in a transparent square on a specific point. Yeah. So think of what are you going to say. You cannot tell all the information. Now, finally, you put a conclusion. Yeah. Now, the discussion will come from the audience. And it's even better for you to listen to the criticism because what I do usually after presenting is really I write, especially let's say one of my junior doctors is presenting and I have a tough critique. I will write it while I'm sitting while he's presenting yeah. because you have a great advantage. You have experts sitting with you. Yeah. You have a large number of people. You have all, and this will be your audience. So you listen to what they say, you document it, and you try to answer it. Try to choose that for a benefit of really writing. Now, I like to stress that posters are different. Harry. For example, in slides, we like to use Times Roman font. Why? Because it's, we call it serif. It has an edge. Yeah. And you can make a shadow and you, it will bulge up. Yeah. Now, posters, no. You have to use Arial without some serif. The number of words should be minimum. There should be red, let's say, from two meters. Yeah. You, you should use the minimum wording, and I have like a developed with, within my the trauma group a specific design. Let's say you cannot put in a, a, a one meter by seventy centimeter more than three figures, and, so, and maximum four pages of uh, of uh, font to twelve times Roman, including the three two references. Don't to put two references. Yeah. What matters is the wording should be nice, the images should be clear. The title should be attracting from far away, and then you should follow exactly what they do. Now, there are very important, uh, important things. 
basic things. First of all, always have plan B. What do I mean by that? I really saw one uh, researcher in, in a conference in France 2007 who came all the way from Argentina to present in Paris, and she made a mistake by sending her poster through the luggage, so it was lost. And I saw her presenting using an A4 page. So, for example, your posters, never, never, if you get hard copy posters, never put them in the luggage, take them by hand. Because this, you are traveling 12 hours for this. Second thing, I learned also from Australia, very nice way, you can even put A3 uh, pages, pages and then fix them there. Yeah. Now it's electronic, so you follow exactly what they do. Now, if it's hard copy, I advise you to put the presentation on a USB, send it on an email, put it in a, a, a Dropbox. Otherwise, you can lose your bag. You can, your bag can be stolen. Your clothes actually can be stolen in, in, in traveling if you travel a lot. So, or your clothes can be delayed. It happens uh, sometimes. So, have a plan B. One of the tricks also, if you are really working in an advanced country, and I want to stress that, you may have the most top program and then they are invited in a developing country of course you will take your laptop but you don't be surprised that you your program is not there and you stand up and you cannot say a word and this i've seen that and always be ready to give your talk without slots yeah. the electricity may go off uh, the whatever is there be prepared to give your message even without slides. So that's another message I really want, want to stress uh, that is, is very useful. Uh, of course, one of the difficult ways of presentation are if two or three are presenting together, which I like, but it's very, very tricky because you have to have harmony if you want to make a group discussion, to yeah. the group presentation, which is great. It shows you this is a teamwork, you like it. The other thing also I want to, to, to warn people especially young people be careful about using videos especially if you don't know the environment because you can spoil all your presentation if it's depending on videos and can delay the presentations I personally in big international conferences I just use images which carry the message I use the videos when I have more control when I know really at, at least I'll try that before I present otherwise it doesn't look nice that you come up and your all your presentation is spoiled simply because you assumed that the technology is good where you are. There are also other two important things. You have to take your slide to the place where they present and see it because from my experience there is something called uh, uh, technical incompatibility. Yeah. Uh, if you use a Macintosh computer and then change it to a PC, you will be surprised to see that all your presentations may be smashed. So yeah. you have the, the font may be changed, the shape will be changed. So see it on the screen, which is going to be presented in the same computer that will be used. Of yeah. course, you can, if it's permitted, the easiest way is your laptop. That is the safest way. But please be careful about the connection because Macintosh connection is different from PC connection. Yeah. So these are general. I mean, it's it's really difficult uh, uh, to tell how to present without practicing. I encourage the students to practice, to really to, to, to present. And the other thing I want to stress for the students, don't take anything from the source of the internet without acknowledging where it is and be sure that it is reliable. I can, I've seen a presentation recently by one of the students and she was presenting the CT scan and she said the stone is on the right side. And I was stop, stop. Do you see the right uh, on the stone of the right kidney on the right side? Do you see the right kidney? She said no, but she, they wrote it like that. I told her, but there's no right kidney. So please, if you take anything from the web or any slide, Pretty or you perfect. take a slide of any person, you have to acknowledge him. It's not your work, it's his mental work, and you have to ask for his permission. I know exactly the people actually I'm using the slides of. I use an IBC injury of the of a bullet from South Africa and I acknowledge the professor who gave it to me. I use a clip early of the yeah. pericardial tamponade from a specific, I know, Dr. Dick Kumandev, and I acknowledge him, uh, or from Dr. Mauro from Italy. But you have to acknowledge the people, these are not mine. Yeah. If you have yours, be brave to stand up and show your material, but please, we never use anything, learn to cite, because this is we learn 
we learned that, for example, in what's plagiarism is taking other work people and pretending it's yours. So Prof, uh, the, one, one last question I want to ask, and then maybe we can, you know, uh, finalize this, you know, episode. Uh, of course, uh, I mean, the presenting in this environment is very important, and getting the feedback is important. Uh, how do you think? I mean, it is this feedback is really valuable to improve your research when you are writing. Yeah, yeah. I, def- I mean, you see, I, I, I am actually whenever I'm in a conference, they notice the young people. Sometimes you have to be careful about young people. Don't be, look like an ugly person who is really torturing them. I always stand if, if I feel there is a problem in the presentation, I tell them, please, there is a major problem in the design. And I stand up. And this is not to show. This is because I learned from Sweden, I was presenting in a conference, and someone told me, why you didn't put a control group? I didn't get angry. He was right. And I made a control group and helped me to publish the paper. And many times I see, especially people without proper training, their seniors try to push them to present and their international press. But there is major flaws in the design. So I stand up and I tell them, please, this is the design will not answer you. This you should do that, should do that. And then believe me, Arif, a lot of these young people come to me. Thank you very much. We've learned a lot. I tell them this is for you. I don't. I feel ethically if I'm in that position to tell you that you could have done this better in a way, better way. So it saves your time. You can yeah. send this paper many times. No one will accept it. Yeah. If it's a very good journal, maybe you can publish it in. And I don't know what quality of journal, but but but. I think it's our duty, but you have to be very polite. Usually, I like to address the supervisor. I never, for example, recently I had a debate with a young, uh, uh, like, the, like a young editor. I didn't speak with her, and I was very polite with her because we have to encourage young people. We are not here to to show them uh-huh. that we know more than them. We uh-huh. are here to help them, and this is why all this series is for them. Yeah. And uh, please don't feel embarrassed. Uh, I mean, I can't really give this quotation. He's kept it. One, my uh, my cousin is a very good teacher, and he used to say, "May Allah bless you." Made me cry and cry on me. Not that who la 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 laughed and la, uh, made me laugh and laughed on me. So sometimes you are science. We really try to to be perfect. We try, to, but we have to be gentle in doing that. I agree completely, but. We, it's our duty to guide young people how to think well and how to do a good job. So and then they are proud of their job and we are proud of them. Believe me, I have the most enjoyable time I have. Some, some of the people, I took them through the presentation. They are old. Maybe some of them six years old. They never presented. They were afraid to be presented. And it's, they, You take them slowly. You show them how to talk. You, you prepare so that even the slides for them. And believe me, sometimes when he stands on the presenting confidently, you almost your tear drops here. Okay. Believe me, I because you have taken someone through the process to be confident, knows what he does. He's another person. He's presenting his ideas, and it's our duty to the support the, the, for the students to, 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 to tell them what we've learned, what are our mistakes, okay. and if you are sometimes, uh, please don't. Feel that if someone stands up it and tell you this is your design, is there's a problem with it, you should li- listen to him. A scientist would listen yeah. and then think and then do proper right. changes and if needed. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's wrong, maybe, yeah, maybe it's maybe wrong, it's but try yeah. to listen to what he says. All right, Prof, thank you very much. And uh, we completed uh, how to present your uh, study in different meetings and different types. So, thank you very much. So, hope to see you in the next episode. Thank you very much, Harry.